A watchdog is a small module in our microcontroller and it helps us by resetting the microcontroller if something in the software causes an error. In this video we're going to learn three things about watchdogs. The first thing is the question why exactly your project needs a watchdog. The second thing is that we have a look inside of the electronics. And at the third point I give you an example in the software how it is acting with and without a watchdog. And at the end I will give you a hint for the watchdog which may can save a lot of development time for you. Before we start I'm a bit curious about your projects. Write it down in the comments where are you working on right now that I can produce videos that helps you the most. The biggest reason why to use a watchdog is simply that you could not test everything within your software. A simple calculation like a division can cause an error because division by zero. And do you prove every time that this not happened in the software? There are also other things like a lost connection or simply a loop that does not end. For all the cases where the microcontroller is stuck, the watchdog rescues us by resetting the microcontroller and we hope that this broken part doesn't come back. Let's have a look where the watchdog is located. It's a part of the peripherals inside of the microcontroller, so it's not a part of the software, it's a standalone hardware module. And how does the watchdog now figure out that something is going wrong inside of the software? The watchdog gets an init timeout and if we don't regular feed or reset the watchdog, the watchdog will reset our microcontroller. For sure, this is one of the easiest implementations you can think of. There are much more complicated ones like in a car or in a plane. If the software is working without an issue and you feed the watchdog regularly, you will not see a difference in the behavior with the software with or without a watchdog. Okay, enough theory. Quickly subscribe to my channel and then start with the practical part. Okay, what we see here is a simple as possible program where we have. So we just have an LED running and we just sleep a second and after a second we toggle those LED. So now let's see what is happening. If we start the program, the program is running and we see that the LED flashes up. So we can stop it here. And then we want to add some more complicated stuff to our program. So let's say we just want to put a button inside and I prepared some button at GPIO 15. And this one is an input and it's a pull up configuration. And yeah, then we just say if the button value is zero, we just want to do some weird stuff. So let's say we want to calculate 15 divided by zero. And then we just say, okay, run the whole stuff. We see what's happening. As long as we don't toggle the button, we just have no problem. The program is running as we expected. What's happening now, if I push the button here, we see that it breaks up and it's not coming back. The LED just stays in the state it had before. Um, yeah, that's not what we like. If we run an embedded system, we don't want to have a behavior like this. So what we can do now is to add this watchdog and then we just have to initialize the watchdog. So we just say watchdog and a timeout, I just say 2000 seconds. And then the important thing is that we have to feed the watchdog. So we just put it in the loop where we reach frequently. So this is a bit tricky. We have to look where it is. And then we just run the whole thing again and see what's happening. And then it's running and the LED is blinking again. So it's working quite nice. When I push now the button, we see that I got an error, but the program is coming back. And this is perfect if we are running in an embedded system where we have no access to the device. So it's coming automatically back. What is important for this is that the file has the name main.py. Otherwise, the Raspberry Pi will not come back with this file. It will try to figure out something else because this is what it starts by its own. 
We're almost done for today. One last hint, you should activate the watchdog at the end of your project before you release it. Otherwise you can run into issues by debugging your code. That's everything for today. I hope you liked the video. Here are some more and see you next time. Goodbye.